Welcome to your 37th Java tutorial. Today we're going to have a review session of many of the concepts we've covered so far. And there will also be some new material as well. And at the end of this I'll also give some advice. So of course we've been talking about establishing inheritance hierarchies when we design our class structure. And of course why do we use inheritance? Because we've determined that some of our classes have certain behaviors and characteristics and attributes in common. So for instance, if we look at this dog superclass, we determine that the beagles and German shepherds both have a common behavior. They both move and they both eat. So we can go ahead and connect these classes together in a relationship called inheritance. So remember, inheritance is not just about reusing code, it's about establishing relationships and behaviors between the various classes or common characteristics. So the subclasses Beagle and German Shepherd inherit from the superclass Dog and therefore we inherit all of the Dog's methods and therefore we can use all of the functionality of the Dog superclass. Now, remember what we discussed before. Superclasses are less specific and the subclasses are more specific. So if you take a look at the move method in the superclass, that will be less specific than the beagle subclass move method. And you can see here, that's why I put beagle specific code. And why do we do that? Well, because German shepherds and beagles might move a little bit differently. They also probably eat a little bit differently. That's why we have to have code that is specific to their own move method within the subclass. And that's what we mean when we extend the behavior of a method. And as I said, that makes sense because a German Shepherd will move a little bit differently than a Beagle and eat a little bit differently. And so we need some specific code in those subclass methods to address that. Now also keep in mind that when we inherit methods from the superclass, we are overriding the superclass method, that is, this is now a different method. The only thing we are reusing is the name of the method, of course, which is move, the arguments, as well as the return type. But the specific code inside of it, of course, is something new and different from the superclass method. Now remember, we can always add more methods and instance variables that are unique only to the subclass. So if you take a look at this German Shepherd subclass, I added a guard method to that. Because German Shepherds, of course, can be guard dogs. Now, we don't think of beagles as guard dogs, so that's not a method that we would put up in the dog superclass. We're just going to add that into the German Shepherd subclass. And therefore, it becomes unique to that subclass. So it is not a method that we are inheriting. And the same thing with an instance variable. You can see here I added a sharp teeth instance variable to the German Shepherd. So now the Shepherd subclass has two overridden methods in terms of the move method and eat method, and one unique method, which is of course the guard method. And of course now we can add any new dogs to our hierarchy because now it's in place. We can just extend off the dog superclass and we could add a poodle if we wanted and so on. And of course we could tweak our superclass too. We could go ahead and uh, add a sleep method to our dog superclass and then all the rest of the subclasses would inherit that. Now you might ask the question, well, if I override the superclass method, I can't use any of that code anymore. So how can I use code from the subclass method and the superclass method? And the answer to that is to use the super keyword right here. So we could call the code in the superclass, execute that, and then once the code in the superclass has been executed in the move method, the beagle specific code in the move method will then execute and then it'll finish. So it's kind of like having the best of both worlds. It's almost like a hybrid between the superclass code and the subclass code and you get to use both lines of code. So again, this super keyword will call the inherited version of the move method in the superclass and after the super is done doing its work, it returns the beagle's move method specific code and executes that. Okay, so I want to talk about uh, some design patterns that you should think of when you're starting to design your classes. And again, you always want to design your class structure before you actually write any code. 
You want to kind of have that in place. And so what we just talked about is this style over here, where we have our superclass as less specific and our subclass as more specific. So we kind of work downward. We have this hierarchy in place. But you don't necessarily have to do it that way. And that is the point I want to make here. You can also actually put everything into your superclass and have that be more specific. And then you can have your subclasses just call everything with the object dot, you know, method or object dot, whatever you want to put there. So again, you can call everything from the subclass to the superclass. So that's one way you can do that. So just keep that in mind. The other way is just to do a standalone class where there's no inheritance hierarchy in place. And this is basically a class that's just by its lonesome little self. And some developers actually prefer this. They don't want to have a huge hierarchy chain because they find that more complex. They find it easier to keep everything inside one class. They don't want to have methods that are overriding each other and then figure out what method is doing what in what class. They want it all in one class. Now, the drawback to that is that this might be harder to maintain, especially if you have a lot of classes. It's always easier to maintain code if you have an inheritance hierarchy in place. But again, it's how you want to do it. Now I have some advice. Um, first is keep your method simple and specific. As a general rule, you don't want methods longer than a page. If it gets long, it'll be hard to maintain and read. So keep it simple. And if methods get too long, they're probably doing different behaviors. And remember, we want that method name specific to the behavior. So if it gets too long, chances are you probably have to break the method up. The second point I'd like to make is reuse as much code as you can. You don't want to reinvent the wheel every time you start a new project. So that's important. The other point I'd like to make is there's a lot of open source out there that do a lot of different things, including the Java API. There's all of this code out there that will do everything from reading files, creating arrays for you, all of this stuff that's already been done for you. So you're taking these tutorials and you're developing skills that will allow you to read code. So you should be able to take that code and meld it into your own code. But remember, it's always easier to reuse somebody else's code that's free open source rather than start from scratch. Starting from scratch is always very, very difficult. So what you wanna do is reuse code and then add your own code to it and then merge it into your own project, make it work for you. Now, you don't wanna let it dominate you. It should fit into your project. It shouldn't become the end all, but you should try to reuse as much as you can. Okay, that is gonna do it for this video. I will see you guys in the next video. And just as a side note here, in the next video, we're gonna get started with polymorphism, abstract classes, and interfaces, which are the absolute key to becoming an effective Java programmer. I will see you guys in the next video.